Hello and welcome to another Royal Reviewer live pop-up chat. Um, it's been a few days since I have done a pop-up chat and over the last couple of days we have had some really good exciting news and in particular today it was revealed that Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex, has been given or has taken on, shall we say, four new royal patronages. My goodness, I'm going to give it a fan flap right from the get-go. Um, Megan gets a massive fan flap um, and I've called this video Megan's Exciting Triumph because I think that's exactly what it is because in the wake of all of the fake, horrible, vile stories that have been coming through in recent months and especially before Christmas, I think this has just proven everybody wrong completely. Um, this is just really exciting and I am really really happy for Meghan and also all of the other royals as well including the members of the Royal Foundation, um, of course Harry, Meghan, Catherine and William. So um, I'm going to go to the chat room straight away because I know you guys will have a lot to say about this uh, and I hope that you are all as excited as I am about it and I can't wait for all of the upcoming engagements and everything that Megan's going to be doing in relation to the four new charities which she will be supporting. Um, lots of people saying hello, hello to everybody. Um, this is Rebecca's first time on the live chat. We can also talk about other things here today as well um, but I just wanted to kind of kick off with I suppose what Meghan has actually been given or taken on. So the Duchess of Sussex has kind of given a real indication today in which direction she wants to go in. So we have charities that represent the arts, education, animal welfare and the empowerment of women. I just want to go back to cast your mind back, I don't know, a month, two months ago, I forget the name of the lady, I didn't pay her much attention because I said that what she was saying was a complete load of old rubbish and um, I think I'm going to give myself a fan flap today and I think I'm going to give a little bit of a smug look. That's my smug look. Hmm. Uh, yes, I'm going to give a smug look because a horrible vile lady did a, a whole article and this article went everywhere. Everyone was talking about it and saying it as if it was true. That Meghan had turned her back on um, on women's rights, and that since she was part of the royal family, that she was that she'd been silenced, and that she wasn't using she wasn't allowed to use her social media, that she wasn't speaking out as much on women's rights. You remember the one? I'm sure you remember the article. I tried to find it so I could get the lady's name, but I couldn't find it. Maybe it's vanished, I don't know. Um, but anyway, you know the one. Let me know if you remember the article. Um, and basically, I said at the time, what a load of rubbish. Megan is just being quiet at the moment because she is preparing for what's about to come. Uh, I always said in January, we would get a whole load of new patronages. We would find out what direction Megan was going to go in with her work. I was right. Um, so that lady who said, that Meghan's, you know, no, can no longer speak out about the empowerment of women and women's rights. What a load of nonsense. I said it was nonsense at the time, and it's nonsense. It's proved to have been nonsense. Meghan is not giving up, um, you know, her, her values on women's rights. A lot of these charities that she has chosen, she can develop and push um, her, her thoughts and her feelings and her passion. Um, a lot of these are passion projects on women's rights and animal rights and everyone's rights. So um, yes, people need to watch what they say um, unless they are absolutely 100% sure. Uh, lots of people saying that they agree <laughs> and people saying they like my smug look. Hmm, there it is again. Um, so two of the new charities were the Queen's and that is the National Theatre. Now, this one leaked yesterday. I did put a little something up on the community page, uh, on the community page the National Theatre website, the IT department, had a little bit of a blunder, oops, uh, where, where they unintentionally released that little snippet of information, or rather the announcement of it, 
the day before, the day prior. So we all kind of knew that one I think was coming. I think we all knew that one was on the cards. Last night it was confirmed, although taken down very, very quickly. Um, so we kind of knew that one. That one was one of the Queen's previous patronages. And I think she held that one for about 45 years. So a very long standing one. Uh, the next one was the Association um, of Commonwealth universities the association of commonwealth universities so i was looking at my abbreviation um which i'm going to call from now on the acu because the commonwealth the association of commonwealth universities is quite a mouthful so the acu which the queen has held for 33 years um and i've i've written down here um that i think we had a little bit of a sort of precursor a little bit of a um a hint from Meghan when she spoke in Fiji uh, about gender grants. You remember the, the university speech when she was in Fiji. Um, so I think that was a little bit of a foreshadowing of what was to come. Maybe it was a little bit of a clue from Meghan. Maybe she's giving us little hints here and there along the way. Um, but certainly we know uh, from the announcements today that a lot of work has been going on in the background that we didn't know about. So I think we got a little bit of a taster from the Fiji, when she was in Fiji, when she gave that speech, uh, when she was talking about gender grants. And again, that's another way that she can extend um, her role in her fight for women's rights within, and also the role of the Commonwealth. I think we know that Harry was made a Commonwealth Youth Ambassador by the Queen, and we kind of thought that Harry and Meghan were going to have quite a prominent role in the Commonwealth. So Harry is a Commonwealth Youth Ambassador and now Meghan has this role within the ACU, the Commonwealth Universities. So I think, well, it's been confirmed, it's definitely true, the pair of them are going to have a big role, a big future role, a big current role, a big, a big present role in the Commonwealth. So I think that, you know, has been cemented today and we can probably expect further um, Commonwealth projects and patronages in the future. I don't know what they might be, but I think we can kind of expect them. Um, the other two charities were Smartworks and Mayhu. Now, Smartworks is where she went today on the engagement, so do go and check out my video about Smartworks. And Smartworks is really interesting. I think that's an amazing charity because it helps women um, get back into the workplace and Megan definitely took on a really good role today as stylist, stylist as some people are saying, where um, she helped pick out some clothing from the charity that women can basically take to 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 have an interview. Uh, maybe they've been out of work for a long time, maybe they need some clothing, some suitable clothing to attend an interview, to get a job, to, to further themselves, to better themselves and Megan was helping them to choose some of the clothes. And I think there was one bit where she joked that she donated a handbag and um, somebody had passed up on it because they didn't want it. <laughs> I want Megan's handbag. Can, can someone please send me Megan's handbag? <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll send another bag in replacement, but I want Megan's handbag. So yes, yeah, so I think that that is a sort of charity. I think if you go to Smartworks' website, you may be able to donate suitable clothing. I think if Megan has donated handbags, I think you might be able to donate some suitable kind of workwear, sort of formal wear, formal interview type clothes to that charity. So a very interesting charity and I think Megan can probably do quite a lot with that one. Um, Mayhew as well, spelt M-A-Y-H-E-W, is about animal welfare and an another really good fit for Megan with her love of animals and dogs in particular. So this charity um, I think operates mainly in London so it deals with lots of, and also tackles homelessness because you know sometimes we see, well actually quite a lot we see, um, that sometimes the only companion that homeless people have is their animal, um, m most commonly a dog. Um, and this charity helps to, um, it aims to find innovative ways to to tackle these problems and make sure that the animals are protected. So that, I think, is another really interesting charity and patronage for Megan to take on. As I've said earlier, it's been confirmed, so much work goes on behind the scenes that we do not know about. So all of these talk about number of days worked, number of engagements worked, who is the hardest working royal, 
I said it before, I'll say it again, I think I've just been proven right, it, it doesn't take into account all of the background work that goes on within the royal family, what they do behind the scenes, and there is so much that does not get published, there is so much that doesn't get found out by the media, um, and of course who knew that Meghan was, you know, was, was researching and um, doing background work on these on these organisations. I think the only one that we kind of found out about was the National Theatre. I also liked that they emphasised in the official statements the work that she's also going to continue doing with the Royal Foundation, which of course is William, Catherine, Harry and Meghan, otherwise known as the Fab Four, as some people like to or some people don't like to call them. Um, so I think they emphasised as well that as Meghan's individual programme of works, which of course Meghan will be attending more than likely by herself as an individual. So before people start speculating that Harry's not attending the events with Meghan, is there a royal rift, is the marriage breaking down? No, that is her individual programme of works, exactly the same as Harry has his individual programme of works, as William does, as Catherine does, as all of the royals do. Um, so those are Meghan's individual charities, but it also cemented that she's going to continue being a, a fully active part of the Royal Foundation, which again is uh, what I think is the Kensington Palace's way of saying those rifts and all these rumours of rifts and feuds, mm -mm -mm, um, it's, it's just a complete load of fakery. Um, so the Fab Four are very much still together with the Royal Foundation. They will still be doing work under that kind of umbrella charity of Heads Together, uh, which tackles mainly mental health issues. So yes, it's all good in the hood, shall we say. <laughs> Definitely all good in the hood. Uh, Prince William, yesterday, um, has become new patron. Megan's not the only one. Uh, if you watch my video, Prince William has become patron of the London Air Ambulance's 30 Years Saving Lives campaign. Do go and check out that video. And we have a couple of new engagements as well. Catherine is going to be at the Royal Opera House um, and she's going to be touring the costume department. That will be very interesting on the 16th of January. So that's something to look forward to. And also Megan is going to be viewing uh, or attending an engagement at the Mayhew charity, the animal charity, which she's just taken on, uh, on Wednesday, the 16th of January. But as we know, she's been doing lots of work behind the scenes. So this isn't going to be her first visit. It will be her first official public engagement with the Mayhew, but not actually her first. She will have been there before to obviously scope everything out and talk about ideas. Now, I want to see what everyone is talking about. So I'm going to zoom back up the comments. So sorry if I'm kind of going all the way back up, but I want to see what people are saying. How are we doing for time? We are fine for time. Everything is fine. Uh, people saying they loved my smug look. Thank you. Um, Marie Hoffman says, hi Elliot, I'm so excited for Megan. She will do a great job. Uh, and lots of people remembering that article which I spoke about earlier which was a complete load of rubbish. H. London says, uh, you know what, talk is cheap. Too many foaming mouths and not enough facts and truth. I would completely agree about that. Um, sorry if I'm skipping a few comments as well. Uh, Massa says, I am in t you're in time tonight for the chat. You are indeed. Um, and you wish Megan all the success. I would agree indeed. Uh, Sweet Serenity said Megan looked wonderful today. I liked her handbag. People are commenting on her shoes, uh, which apparently uh, she actually has had from her TIG days. Uh, so, somebody said, I, I read something somewhere, someone made a comment that she wore those shoes uh, back on her TIG vlog, blog rather. Um, so they aren't new shoes, they are recycled shoes, as they like to say. Um, so don't go getting on Megan for buying expensive shoes. She already had them and paid for them with her own money. But I liked the bag. It was very reminiscent of um, the Queen's Lorna handbags. I liked the little square kind of bag. I liked it. I thought it was lovely. And I hope that's not the one that she donated because I want it. Okay, just... Uh, Rachel says they're all appropriate patronages. I would agree. 
Uh, thank you to the mods for doing a wonderful job uh, modding this chat, by the way, because I can see quite a few comments have been removed by them, so thank you so, so much. Uh, Karen Mitchell says, we have the same type of charity here in America. Um, and you say it's called uh, Dress for Success. Well, there you go. Um, I think it's a very, very good idea. Um, Sharon Hill Walker says, thanks for the updates. I'm so happy for Megan and the Queen's trust in her. Go the royal family. It's definitely Megan's triumph, I think, today. Um, okay, I'm just scrolling down some of the comments. I think there was a little bit of, of hassle and fuss in the chat tonight. Uh, Christine says, I remember when the Fab Four were the Beatles. <laughs> Not anymore, they got a new meaning. Okay, thank you to Lady Buckingham for um, for doing a lot of modding, I think. Oh yes, Megan's earrings. They were like um, like a bar with three little drops. Very, I've never seen ones like that before. They were very, very interesting. Um, I'm not sure what make they were. I didn't check the make. Um, I'm sure some of the other uh, fashion blogs will have already discovered what make they are. If you know, let me know in the comments. Um, Sheila says, do you think the media will stop bullying Megan now? Well, who knows? I, it's These kind of stories, they have a shelf life, I think. And there's only so far they can go. And I think they realise that people aren't buying it. Well, some people might be, but um, a lot of people just aren't buying it. A lot of people are fed up of it. A lot of people just want the truth. Um, so I think it's coming up to its shelf life and I hope the media will now change tact completely. Oh yes I'm wearing the Meghan um, tiara, the <laughs> Queen Mary's diamond bandeau that Meghan wore for her wedding. Do you like? I thought it was appropriate today. Uh, Leonette, Le Leonielette, I think I got that right. <laughs> Says, Megan's shoes is to die for. They are indeed. I, li I liked them. Uh, Sharon Hill says, her feet fit in them despite being pregnant. Oh yes, the bump. Uh, she wore um, a black today. Um, and I think her bump um, is definitely growing. Um, again, we do not know when the birth month is, although we still think possibly April. I know some people think March, uh, but I'm still plumbing for April. I'm a fan of the April. Um, Lona loves a bargain, says this is not her first visit. She said in, in another video that she suggested a handbag to one of the clients and she didn't like it. Um, yes, that is um, what I said earlier. Uh, Beverly says, I like her hair in a tighter bun. Uh, okay, Leona, um, Lona rather, says her earrings are by Kime, spelled K-I-M-A-I. -I. Uh, Sheila says the bump is huge. And Fatou says, can you please explain to us about Meghan and Harry's move to Frogmore House and when are they moving? Well, it's not Frogmore House, it's Frogmore Cottage. Um, I think I saw another story today about saying that they got details on what Meghan and Harry are doing to the house. Basically, don't waste your time reading it. There were no real new details really to note about, except something about the replacement of fireplaces. And um, and that I think, in fact, actually, this is what I expected anyway, because I said that being a listed building, I think it's grade two listed, not grade one listed. Um, but nevertheless, with grade listed buildings, the planning consent usually like you to replace things like for like if you're renovating or if it was something that had already been converted before being listed, as in this case, uh, they like you to return as much of the original building um, back to how it was. So I imagine that they will probably be wanting Harry and Meghan to return as much of the original layout back to how it was. So back to the original room sizes that I think they've allowed them two new orangery extensions and of course renovation of the outbuilding but they want things uh, kept like the floorboards uh, they want them kind of renovated and reused 
Um, I think the roof has to be the original tiles and where tiles may be broken, they will have to replace like for like. Um, again, with the chimneys, basically it has to be a sympathetic restoration. And apart from that, we don't know any further details on it, so I wouldn't even bother reading it, to be quite honest. There, there isn't really any new information. It's just basically what happens with a listed building. You have to replace um, like for like. Uh, what else was there? Oh yes, when are they going to move? Well, it said when they first announced the move that they hope to be in uh, by the time baby is born in spring. But as we know, as you may know, as I know with my old building, when you renovate a building that's old, often problems occur that you didn't foresee and that pushes things back in the time. So, although they intended that they hoped to be in by the time baby's born, I don't think that's happening. And I did have a little bit of information, uh, which I'm not going to say where it's from, but I am convinced, let's put it this way, I'm convinced that the house will not be ready in time for the birth of baby Sussex. I think there may have been setbacks, I think it may have been an even bigger job than was what originally expected, as often happens with these buildings, that is normal. And we do know from this week that they are also keeping on the Cotswolds property. So the fact that Frogmore isn't ready isn't a big deal. They still have the Cotswolds property. That is still safe and secure with all the royal protection. Um, so they will have a bolt hole to go to that isn't Kensington Palace. Let's put it that way. Um, so nothing to worry about, they will be perfectly fine whether the house is ready or not. I hope it's ready, but I don't think it will be. Uh, let's put it that way. You can hold me to that. Uh, if I'm wrong, you can smack me and troll me. Uh, but no, I don't think I'm wrong on that one. We did also learn, I think, from that, from that article today that um, no need to worry about security at Frogmore Cottage. That will all be stepped up in time for when they move in, which is basically what I said in the first place. Um, MSNB2012 says, I was so glad to see the Duchess looking so well, as were we all. Um, Leonette says, I hate the media slandering Megan, they, they need to stop. She isn't going anywhere, she isn't indeed. Arnold Sanders says, Sky News complained they had a £50,000 boiler installed. Um, there was talk about the boiler, but apparently it's some kind of eco-friendly heating system. Um, so I don't know quite the ins and outs of it, but apparently it is rather expensive. But there you go, it's going to save money in the long time because it's more eco-friendly. Uh, EAO says, what's the difference between a Grade 1 and Grade 2? Listen, I think I have a cat come in. I do, we have Rory. If you see a cat, it's Rory. Uh, the difference between grade one and grade two, grade one is kind of like the super protected, the super important building. So uh, like Westminster Abbey, Buckingham Palace, they would be grade one listed. In other words, you have to get consent if you want to paint anything, change anything. If you're restoring, it has to be almost like an exact restoration. Uh, basically, it means that it's a building of national importance uh, that has to be protected and if you own it you have to jump through so many hoops to try and protect it. Grade 2 listing is still, it's just like a little tiny step down from, from grade 1 listed. I think you have a few more um, a few more privileges in terms of what you can do with it, more, more allowances. So for example on the grade 1 listed building it's doubtful they would have been able to have added the orangeries whereas with the Grade 2 listed, they've approved the um, the orangery extensions, probably with the proviso that the rest of the building gets restored as much as it possibly can be. And that's, that's grade listing in a nutshell. Okay, I think I've kind of done quite a lot of the questions so far. DC says, what's an orangery? In America, I think it's called a sunroom. <laughs> we had this this um, debate a while ago, and I, I I posted a picture of what an orangery was, and uh, people were saying they're known as sunrooms in America. Um, 
Elizabeth Caesar, Elizabeth Caesar says, will Megan present her baby outside the hospital like Catherine? I still think if the house isn't ready or the cottage isn't ready, I still think she'll have baby in um, in London, possibly the Lindo wing, which is, I think, um, my preferred choice that I'm opting for for Megan. Um, now, a lot of people I know are anti-baby parade. I know we have some people that watch and comment that are anti-baby parade, and that is showing the baby outside the hospital for all to see. And I've been doing a lot of thinking about this, and... I think because of the media attention, the one thing that doing a baby parade does is it takes the bounty off the baby's head. And when I say the bounty, I mean the media bounty. Imagine if they just rushed off without anyone seeing the baby. There would be so much interest, there would be so much money placed on a first photograph of the royal baby that they would be hounded. Um, the media attention would be relentless until they had a photo, which is wrong. It shouldn't be like that. However, just because something's wrong doesn't make it not true. The bounty, there would be a huge bounty on the first photograph of the baby. You know, a photograph would sell for hundreds and hundreds of thousands of pounds or dollars, as you might want to put it. Um, so the one thing that a baby parade does is... Um, <laughs> even though it might be very traumatic for the mother and baby, it gets that out of the way. It, everyone can get their photo and then the royal couple can go on, just as we've seen William and Catherine do, they just drive off and all that pressure, that media attention is gone, uh, which means then they can get on with enjoying the birth of their new baby, um, of course, having their new baby and just, you know, relaxing without the bounty being on that baby's head. So, uh, you may not like the baby parade, but it does serve a purpose. That's all I'm saying on it. Uh, Victoria says, other royals don't show their babies. Very true. But then there isn't the amount of attention and the that kind of bounty upon their heads. It, it's different. Uh, Mrs. BSN says, actually, we don't see much of the babies during the baby parade. We don't. We kind of see a bundle of cloth, but that's enough. <laughs> and I kind of like a little bit of face, maybe. And then the, the royals go off and they may release a photo. Who knows? In time. Uh, Sonny O says, very eloquently explained about the baby parade. Well done. It does serve that purpose. You know, that is one of the reasons why they do it. I mean, obviously, there's just such media and world interest in the baby that I think getting it out of the way will probably be a weight off their shoulders. It may be traumatic. You know, you've just given birth for the first time and you have to go outside and parade your baby. Uh, Catherine makes it look easy. She's an expert. Um, she comes out all glam, hair, makeup, clothes. Um, she makes it look effortless, but it must be such a strain. But it does take that bounty off the baby's head. Okay, now, um, I am going to leave it here for tonight. I think we've covered quite a lot about what's gone on today. And we've also spoken a little bit about the birth of the baby and a bit about Frogmore Cottage and a um, little bit about upcoming engagements. For those of you who have just joined, um, I'll just mention the upcoming engagements again. Uh, so for Catherine, the Duchess of Sussex, she will be visiting the Royal Opera House and in particular the costume department on the 16th of January. And Megan, her, Megan's next engagement will be at the Mayhew on Wednesday the 16th of January, unless anything else is announced beforehand. Uh, and of course, the Mayhew is the animal charity which she's just taken on. So those are some new upcoming engagements to look forward to. Um, I just want to take this time to say thank you to everybody uh, for watching all of my videos. Um, if you watch, it really, really does help. So thank you so, so much to that. I would recommend hitting the notification bell. Sometimes YouTube works and it may notify you if you hit the bell. Also, please make sure that you are subscribed 
to the channel. Uh, it really does help. So give this video a big old thumbs up if you haven't already and yeah 